Hello, sir. My colleague and I are going through the neighborhood to see if you'd like to know the truth. Sure, I love the truth. Okay, we from uh, Jehovah Witness, we Kingdom Hall Jehovah Witness, and uh, we believe, sir, that uh, many people interpret the Bible as wrong. What's a Jehovah's Witness? Yes, sir, we believe the, the truth. I was once like you. I know not what to believe, but then I let my provider Jehovah into my heart. Have a nice day. So from time to time, I get people that give comments, and uh, I try to respond to some, but sometimes the comments are so so numerous that I can't really get to them. And then sometimes the comments are just insulting, uh, attacking, name-calling, because they disagree. Then the first thing they do, rather than just address the point, is they'll just attack your character, call your names. Well, there was this one such person who goes by the name of uh, Kenneth King. I'm going to call him Kenny who on the Jehovah's Witness video that was put out, his first line was to insult and to call me a child. And I thought about it and I, I thought maybe I'll just go ahead and let it go, but he, he, uh, uh, he wanted me to respond to all of his points. When you look at the, the comments though, it's just a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff to comment on to respond to, and so I'm not going to respond on everything, uh, this mini book that he wrote, but I, would, I decided to comment on the issue that he first presented this issue of John 1-1. But the guy is still, as I said, uh, still a little bit insulting. And so it just made me wonder, who is this person? Because, you know, most people won't say certain things to your face, but you can be emboldened. You can be tough behind the keyboard. I'm, I'm, I'm used to the tough guy acting, so I'll play along with him. But I, I wanted to really, I, I just really wanted to know who is this guy? I would, I would love to know who this guy is. And I got a tip. One of the tips is that maybe this guy, Kenneth, is Kenny from the cartoon. I never really watched it, but Kenny from a cartoon South Park. Maybe, huh? All right, Kenny, you know it has to happen. Everyone watch Kenny with the soap and dry him off with the soap. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I want to address you, Kenny to give you this rebuttal to see if I can hold you to what the scriptures say. You made a comment about uh, that how I was an amateur in understanding John 1.1. I gave you the Greek. You had a problem with me using the Greek. But as I said before in the comment section and in other videos that Jesus did not speak English. The Bible is given to us in Greek. So John or Matthew or Mark or any of the New Testament writers were people who spoke Greek and certainly wrote Greek. And it's highly likely that Jesus and the characters in this area also spoke Greek because that was the lingua franca for Palestinian Jews at that time. So it's important to understand what and how Greek is to be used and how it's to be understood. And so the question that he used was, who is in the beginning? And so I gave a reply. The first portion of John 1, 1 says, in arcane and halaga. In arcane is in beginning, in the beginning. How Kenny takes it is that Jesus was created in the beginning. How he gets that, I don't know. Kenny takes it as though Jesus had a beginning. What Kenny doesn't understand is this word arcane is the same word used in the Greek Septuagint. Now, what the point of the Greek Septuagint is, is that when the Jews were taken into captivity, they began to lose their language. They began to speak the language of their captors, and so too did the Jews. And so over time, many Jews began to lose their understanding and their use of Hebrew. <clears throat> the Septuagint, or also sometimes called the LXX or the 70, because it's reported that there were 70 Jewish scholars who wrote uh, or translated the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, into Greek. And it's interesting about the Septuagint that this is the uh, uh, the Old Testament version that is most often quoted in the New Testament. It's the, it's the version that even Jesus himself quotes when he quotes the Old Testament. So there's some value in understanding the Septuagint, right? Well, in Genesis 1-1, it says in our English, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you would think, Kenny, that if you're going to use that same logic, that in John 1, 1, that since the word uh, was in the beginning, that Jesus had a beginning. 
So using that same logic, then you would have to say that God had a beginning in Genesis 1-1. Incidentally, Kenny, the same word arcane in John 1-1 in the Greek is the same Greek word that's used in Genesis 1-1. Arcane is there also. So Kenny, if you're going to be consistent, not insulting, not trying to prove a point, if you're going to be scholarly or at least wise, you are going to have to try to be consistent. If it means this in John 1.1, then it's got to mean the same thing in Genesis 1.1, meaning that also since Jesus, according to you, Kenny, had a beginning, so too did God. Now, Kenny, you want me to read and cover all your points, Kenny. I'm not going to do that. Why, Kenny? Because you're not even being intellectually honest to the first portion of the question, which is that you that you brought up was John 1.1. 1, 1. I'm not going to go in and listen to someone else's video clips. I'm not going to read all that you have to offer. You came to my channel and you wanted to talk about I even offered to bring you on live to debate. But Kenny, you didn't want to. Why? Because Kenny, maybe you're not the man that you say you are. You called me a child. You called me an amateur. That's fine. I may very well be both of those things. But Kenny, I offered you and you declined to accept. So Kenny, if you want to, and I'll give you this opportunity, if you want to make a video, if you want to make that video presented in the links of the comment, I will put your comments on so that others can see how non-childish that you are, Kenny. Oh my God, he killed Kenny. You brought up Colossians 1.15 because it says that Jesus was the firstborn. Well, Kenny, again, it was written in Greek, Kenny. And since it was written in Greek, Kenny, we need to understand what the word that's there for firstborn. Well, Kenny, the word that's used there is the word prototokos, which is, and if it sounds familiar to you, Kenny, or anyone else, that's where we get the, the term in English, prototype. It does not mean that he is the first of all the created beings. No, Kenny. What it means is that he takes preeminence. No Jew at that time would have taken it as that. So, Kenny, you're going to have to do some homework. I'll, I'll go ahead and allow you to, again, make your video, send the link to your video, and I'll post it. Or if you want to email me the video, however you want to do it, Kenny, this is your opportunity to do so. So, Kenny, you took umbrage because I called the Jehovah's Witnesses a cult. And you have a problem with that. But if I think somebody is in a cult or if I think an organization is a cult, shall I just be silent on that? Because, oh, my God, somebody like Kenny might get offended. <laughs> Kenny. Oh, Ken's taking it especially hard. Well, no, Kenny. Go back to where you, you get all your studying from. Go get all your watchtower uh, understanding and then come back and let us know. Yeah, thanks for going back to hell for us. You're a real pal. So, I enjoyed this, Kenny. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but I'm not going to back down from what the word says. I'm not going to uh, allow you to think that your horrible interpretation of the passage, just like the one you said here in Proverbs, is stating that Jesus was clearly created when he's talking about wisdom. This is Hebrew poetry. And if it's talking about Jesus and he had a beginning, then according to this passage, the beginning of, of this passage in Proverbs means that Jesus is also a woman because it uses the feminine pronoun, she or her, right? You're going to have to stop being so disingenuous and trying to prove your, your Jehovah's Witness point and just be honest and true to the text. And if that means delving into the Greek or the Hebrew, well, then so be it. That's what we're going to do. That's not what children do. That's what adults do. Hey man, Kenny. <laughs>